Bienvenidos. In this video, we will be sharing with you our new water filtration system. We were inspired by a video I found on John John Die Life is Easy YouTube channel, and the water filtration technique was developed by a student at the time, now Professor Josh Kern, who tested the water in a lab twice a month for many years to make sure that it eliminated chemicals, bacteria, and other pesticides that farmers use in the countryside. When I first moved to the countryside of Bolivia, I noticed immediately I was having digestion problems and bloating and come to find out it is completely normal for the people around here to be dealing with these symptoms. So in this video we'll be taking you through the steps that we took, some of the materials that we used, how it's been working for us along with some obstacles that we had during the process of building it and at the very end we will share with you some ideas and plans we have to expand this clean water not just here on the farm but to the rest of our community here in Misque, Bolivia. So let's get right into it. So we started off by making a, a foundation with rocks and cement and then we, we built the walls for the um, structure here with bricks. Uh, we are plastering the wall in order to get it more stable and, and in order to just cover up the bricks we need a layer of plaster on it. And we left the back side open because it's always in the shade so we've made some shelves in here that we use to store our fertilizer always need extra storage space especially when you have a tiny house and we made this platform actually on the on the floor over there using a mold a wooden mold some steel and cement and then brought it over dropped it on top it ended up being pretty heavy so we had to conscript some uh, some neighbors what they were watching the football and put it on together after that it was a case of uh, plumbing it up and it was a big process to collect and sort and clean all of the materials. We had a lot of hands for that, thank you, those volunteers. And it was a case of plumbing it up, filling in the materials, and uh, troubleshooting the problems that we, that we discovered. So right now we've designed the water input to come from the town water, which is getting treated with aluminium and, and um, chloride which is both not very good we're trying to work with them to uh, to switch that to chlorine dioxide so we can cure the whole town but in the meantime we take that water in it comes into this tank and this is almost like a sediment uh, tank so it has medium-sized rocks all the way through which you'll see as we made it that um, resets the memory of the water water doesn't like going through a 90 degree turns and as it, if you imagine it coming down the river it's going through rocks like this it's actually putting a, a resetting its memory and putting a nice charge on the water in the meantime it's passively filling up here and any big sediment is falling to the bottom periodic flush of the of this valve will take the big sediment out once it reaches the top valve it comes down into the second tank which has in from uh, big rocks down the bottom to me medium sized, smaller stones, very small stones, sand and fine sand in layers. So once that's full, it goes through into the third tank, which starts at sand, fine sand, and then a layer, a good layer of uh, activated carbon. And then that over overflows into the third, uh, the fourth tank, which is purely a water reservoir. So we have. 160 liters of purified water waiting here and we've hooked this up so it can fill up the blue water bottles easily and we've also put an indoor tap which we cook with and, and drink with from the kitchen. That's sweet. Our platform came out to be 1.5 by 1.2 meters to support four 160 liter barrels. It's key to be sure the platform is perfectly level and even to ensure the flow of water. After we established the platform, these are the materials we utilized. We wanted to make the list available for a screenshot. Four 160 liter barrels. It's important that they are washed thoroughly and not previously filled with toxic materials. 
one float valve set, one one inch male and female threaded coupler and a rubber gasket, eight half inch male and female threaded couplers and rubber gaskets. We made our rubber gaskets from old bike tires, one one inch nipple, eight half inch nipples, one one inch ball valve, two half inch ball valves, three rolls of Teflon, eight 90 degree elbows, and one silicone tube with the gun. Here's the second available screenshot of materials we needed. Six meters of half inch pipe, one bike tire, one meter of synthetic cord, one screw, a piece of electrical wire, and four meters of fine mesh screen. The tools we used were two plumber's wrenches, a saw, a half inch threader, a drill, and a drill bit. And last of the things we needed were the natural materials that would go into the barrels. Three concrete block chambers or large bricks, one big bag of large river rocks, one big bag of medium sized rocks, two big bags of pea gravel, one big bag of coarse sand, two big bags of fine sand, and two big bags of activated charcoal. We're lucky enough to have Fabian here as our expert. Uh Water filter guy, sure. yes, yeah. of course. Uh -huh. From Germany, from yeah. Germany. German engineering. We're pretty excited to start this project. We recently uh, thought that the water, the town water, wasn't so good, and uh, people were getting diarrhoea. So we're buying bottled water, and it's killing us. It's about uh, 15 bolivians a day. So this is a pretty urgent project, and something that's been on the wish list for ooh, about six months. Yeah. Today's day one. Let's go. Yeah. So we, we've bought. Uh, carbon locally and I don't know how it's been produced uh, ideally I'd have a barrel without the top and the bottom and put some bricks underneath it put some wood in it harder the better make a big fire once it's going really well put the lid on knock out the bricks at the bottom seal any holes and that will turn it into carbon because uh, I don't want to cut the bottom off a barrel that I've got we went ahead and bought it with commercial uh, carbon Apparently, it can be made with tar in the process. So I don't know if that's the case, but what we're going to do is go ahead and Fabian here is going to go ahead and uh, and crush it up to a good size and then rinse it. And the difference is in the rinsing. If you made it yourself, you could get away with three rinses and it'll be clean. If it's been made with tar in the process, which we don't know, we'll see as the water comes out, then we're going to need to wash it like 10 times. So we're going to do that and then we're going to activate the charcoal and by doing that uh, all we do is add lemon juice and let it dry so that's the next stage choose your weapon okay let's go with this one we're just gonna yeah, pour it on so the big pieces stay on the top like gold mining yeah. <laughs> yeah. carbon mining it's a filter in the making Fabian's gonna give it a second hit. <laughs> first, we had to make the one inch flush valve in the very bottom of the first barrel. So, this is the purge valve, which is what we're gonna use a one inch tap for that. Look, if you don't have the right tool for making the hole, a quick way to do it is just use this is a, a metal and wood. Drill bit, you can put it in the hole and just, it'll spin around like that. We put silicone here on the outside with a rubber gasket to keep it from leaking. On the inside also went silicone and the rubber gasket. What we're going to do is use an old car tire and cut one out around about this shape to go here. All right, there it is. Apparently it's more important to seal on the inside. We'll also put silicone around there and like that, that shouldn't fail. This is the second hole we made for the float valve. Silicone and a rubber gasket goes on the inside and the outside. We made sure that it had the space it needed to move up and down freely. So with Teflon, there's a direction. If you look at the end of the pipe and then go clockwise, that's the direction also if it's spinning like that you just flip the teflon around and it should hold it tight and i give it a good 10 times 
rip it off. Got it all together. We're going to put these over here. Yeah. And then we're going to be able to tighten it up on the inside and silicon it. And we'll get to play with the top ones last. Yeah. So now we're just going to make holes in the tank as per the design. It's pretty easy if you have the right tool head. You can do it with a normal drill and then with a lot of precaution, but I recommend getting one of these. Next, at the top of the first barrel, we made the hole for when the water flows up then goes into the second barrel. And then in the second barrel, we made the bottom hole at the same level and size as the first barrel, which is very important. The second barrel gets a hole at the top, the third gets another bottom and top hole, and the same for the fourth barrel. Before filling up the first barrel, go ahead and connect the first to the second. Like from here pointing this way. Yeah. Now in the first barrel, we used large heavy bricks to protect the float valve so that it may move freely and also keep rocks from falling around it. Make a hole in the top brick or chamber for the cord to go through. Next, we place big rocks around the chambers, then place the synthetic cord through a half inch pipe in order to direct it and add the pea gravel into the barrel almost to the top of the pipe. Then we tied the float to the top of the string, making sure that the float won't be pressed down by the lid once it goes on. For the second tank, we placed the large rocks first, and then pea gravel, and then a piece of the screen on top to prevent too much sand from falling to the bottom of the barrel. Then we added coarse sand, and then fine sand, to where it filled up the barrel to just below the exit pipe. In the third barrel, we added big rocks, then pea gravel, and then another piece of screen, then again rough sand, about three inches thick. And then we added the same amount in fine sand. And lastly, we added about 10 inches of activated charcoal on top. Wow, it looks like it filled up quick. Oh yeah, you can see it coming up really fast. The water's coming up a little bit dirty, just from the, the fine sand. I would say the last of the dirt in the farm's fine sand. So. You have to run it through three times to clean it, but I'm sort of intercepting the water before it goes to the carbon tank just to preserve the carbon a little bit. But yeah, it's not so bad already. It was necessary for us to place another piece of screen on top of the charcoal with large clean rocks to prevent the charcoal from floating and blocking the exit pipe. So we thought this project would take a little less time than it actually did because we ran into tiny obstacles along the way. Yeah, so one thing is you'll note that the barrel curls in at the top and if you get a bit greedy like I did and make the, the overflow uh, hole too high up, it will potentially create an airlock in this, in this uh, corner valve, in this corner piece here which is called koro in Spanish. To overcome that, uh, we had to shorten this to pull it down a little bit more and to start the flow put a hose in there with running water to take that air out. Another thing we did was the sand was a little bit too fine in this one and we had a mesh separating the, the, the coarse sand from the fine sand and that could be problematic sometimes. I think what I would do, what we did do, was had coarse sand go on top of that uh, of the mesh filter and then fine sand on the top. One of the first things that we did because it wasn't working properly the balloon in this first barrel when it was rising it was getting stuck on something and what john john die did was put center blocks to protect the lever from the other rocks falling into it so we had to take everything out and readjust that we we used bricks as you saw in the video and so we just had to make it just right so there was enough space when it was rising it wasn't catching on to anything and there was plenty of room for it to move around and be protected and this valve being too high here, you have to think about the 
uh, height of the float valve and that has to be above uh, this exit and beneath where the where the lid is so we had to make a dent in the float valve so that it all fit in there this building is actually a community building and we use it for meetings when it's wet or, or yeah when it's wet basically other than that under this tree in the shade yeah I have a picture for this place being a real hub for the community and uh, being more than just a meeting space being a trading post and beautifully finished one of the key things we'd like to contribute to this community is is a water filter the same one we made there would be big enough for this whole community a lot of them are experiencing the same problems with their with parasites and, and poor water quality. They're buying water in blue bottles, which is sort of expensive for here, and it's not even that good, the water. So without telling anyone, if, if we could ask for our community's help, let's build, let's build them a water filter here. It's also gonna help for the football competition. We just finished the first uh, football competition here, and it went so well. Everyone in the community paid for the prizes and for the cleaning and the cutting of the field and stuff like that. It went so well and the players enjoyed playing on the field so much that the local government, the Alcaldia, is now paying for the prizes for the next competition which has just started. But one of the key factors in selecting a field is if there's drinking water available. So we'd like to make freely available filtered drinking water, not just to our community but to the football tournament also. So we calculate that the full cost of our system, excluding the labor inputs, was around $250. Uh, the, the biggest cost was the, were the, the barrels and the plumbing. The rest you have materials and the, and the actual foundation itself. That doesn't include labor costs, nor the cost to feed the volunteers. But who knows, in your country you might be able to get these blue tanks for free. Uh, the key is select tanks that didn't have chemicals in them. These ones were used to bring, um, I think, food coloring and some food grade items over, so that was perfectly fine. We rinsed them out four or five times and they're good. So it's been a month since we have had this water filtration system and completed the project and it has been healing our stomachs. The volunteers are having a better experience with the water and the neighbors, we're hoping, we've had our neighbors come by and drink from the water as well. They're really enjoying it, even the flavor. Salud. Salud. <laughs> ¿Cómo es el sabor? No, mucho mejor que del, del grifo, ¿no? Que tiene un sabor... Dulce, ¿no ve? Eh? Claro, sí. Dulce. It's a game changer when you have a healthy stomach, physically, mentally. It helps a lot. And the water tastes great. It does taste really good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye. Is finally healing. Buenas Hola, tardes. Vecino. ¿Cómo estás? Pasa, pasa. Come on, Nuestro vecino. Diga tu nombre a la cámara. Vamos a seguir, vamos a seguir. Está grabando. Está grabando. And we're back from having a little chat with the Nofre.